wholesome on the last chapter. Very wholesome. I'm gonna just be so for real. This book just didn't hit the same as the first two for me. What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hello, my name is Erica and it is so good to have you. I'm back with another book video. I know a lot of you guys are here for the fitness content and I promise it is coming pretty much every single week, but once in a while I like to throw a book video in there because I know there's some of you guys that are equally as obsessed with workouts and the gym as you are with books, just like myself. I have recently done a little bit too much book shopping maybe. I don't know if there's, there's a thing as too much book shopping, but I feel like I've purchased a lot of books recently and my shelves are overflowing with my TBR or my to be read, if you will. This video is dedicated to trying to get through a decent chunk of my physical TBR. And by that, I just mean physical books that I have on my shelves that I have not read that I'm anticipating reading. Without further ado, I want to touch on what book I have recently been reading as of the last maybe day or two, and that is Powerless by Elsie Silver. I think I have most, if not all, of the Chestnut Springs books on my bookshelf beside me. I think I may be missing one of them, but I have read the first two, and this is the third book in the series. And if you are unfamiliar, Chestnut Springs is a cowboy romance small town series, and they are kind of connected in the sense that it is kind of like a found family. So there's I think four or five brothers and most of the books are involving one of the brothers. So you do get kind of the side characters and characters from previous books that come back as like additional side characters. So this is the third book and we're following Jasper and Sloan who are childhood friends and I don't want to give too much away but as I said it is a romance book so childhood friends to lovers trope which we love and I just want to premise this by saying these books are spicy and they're not like fade to black spice you do actually get the spice in them so keep that in mind. Most of them are a little bit kind of like a slow burn. This one isn't as slow burn but there is still a lot of tension which I love. I really enjoy the way that Elsie Silver writes it's easy to imagine, it's pretty fast paced. I don't feel like she puts in too much detail that we don't need there. And I love the found family element and just like the, the setting of being in the country, falling in love, etc. So this book I've been reading for the last like two days and we just got to the kind of spicy scenes and them getting together for the first time. And it was pretty steamy, let me leave it at that. So I'm intrigued to see what happens because I'm already like two thirds of the way done and I don't feel like anything crazy has happened yet. So I'm waiting for like a ball to be dropped if that makes sense. I'm not really sure what the plot is going to be quite yet or the main climax. So TBD, I'm excited to keep you guys updated on what I think. But yeah, I just wanted to intro the video and let you guys know I'm reading this book first. We're gonna get through some of my physical TBR and I wanted to bring you guys along. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I know we're basically in the same spot as I was last time I talked to you guys. I didn't really get any clips of me reading this book because I did read it pretty quickly. I think when I spoke to you guys, I was like two thirds done and I finished the rest in I think within that same day and I feel like I needed a couple days to just like let it sink in before I came back to you guys and gave you my thoughts and I'm kind of sad because I really love the Chestnut Spring series but for whatever reason this book just didn't hit the same as the first two for me I've heard the fourth book which I think is called Reckless is a lot of people's fan favorite so I'm excited to get to that one but this one just kind of fell short to me in the sense that I didn't feel like there was a lot of plot development and a very exciting climax, if that makes sense. Like I was reading and there was a lot of smut and the relationship development was kind of cute, but ultimately I didn't feel like anything major happened that was like a page turner. Unfortunately, it just wasn't my favorite. I'm gonna give it a three star because I still think that the found family aspect and the writing itself and the romance is cute and it's a good book, but I just wasn't drawn in like I was with the other two in the series. So I don't know if anyone else has had that experience reading this book because I know that a lot of people like Jasper and Sloane's relationship, but for me, it just wasn't it. So with that being said, I have picked up my next read, which is another book that was on my physical TBR that I actually picked up pretty recently. And this one is called One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. I recently read The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose, which is a very, very, very popular book. It's a murder mystery and it kind of gives the housemaid vibes, but this one is giving Desperate Housewives or The Real Housewives of LA or Miami or one of those shows. The basic premise of this book is 
is that there's a group of I think four wives of rich men some of them are also rich wives they also have their own jobs some of them but they all go to the same hair salon slash spa and it's kind of like their place where they all go and congregate to gossip and just exist as housewives and there's a lot of drama within the friendship and the owner of the hair salon Jenny is aware of what's going on because when you go to the hair salon as a girl you know you kind of just talk 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 and share what's going on in your life so Jenny is the one that knows what's going on with everyone but obviously each of the wives doesn't know necessarily what's going on with the other wives and one of them ends up dead and Jenny is being interviewed by the police to try and figure out who did it who killed one of the wives and we also don't know which wife is killed so we're going back in time about three weeks before the murder and then there's also moments where it's present tense and Jenny is being interviewed by the police. So that's the premise. I don't want to give too much away but it's it's very fast paced similar to A Perfect Marriage. One of the reasons why I loved that book is because the chapters were very short so I was just whipping through and this one is the same. The chapters are like max four pages and it's in different people's POV so different wives, Jenny's POV, etc. So it's keeping me on my toes and I started this yesterday and I'm already 120 pages in. I feel like I'm over a third of the way through so I'm going through it very fast. It sucks you in from the beginning and one thing that I really enjoy is that I was a little bit confused at first between all of the different wives but within the first three or four chapters it became really easy to decipher people's personality traits and their kind of backstory and every individual chapter where it's from another wives point of view you really do feel the difference in the persona or the era is that the right word the air of that person so it's not like each person kind of meshes into another it's very distinct this is this person's personality this is this person's personality so so far so good i'll keep you guys updated on what i think but it's definitely a good change of pace because i feel like i've been reading a lot of romance and this is definitely not romance Alrighty, I'm back with an update on One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. I also want to say if my chin looks crazy, you guys, I burnt my chin so bad yesterday laying out in the sun that it's like bubbling, which I know is awful, but the sunscreen situation, I guess, was not in my favor. <laughs> so I'm just staying with the fact that my chin looks awful. Anyways, back to the books. Geneva Rose, one thing about her, and I've only read two of her books now, but one thing about her that I appreciate is how fast paced her books go. And I think I said that in the last clip that every chapter is like max four pages and it kind of ends on like a little bit of a cliffhanger that makes you want to keep flipping the pages and finishing the book. So I did finish this book pretty quickly. However, I will say I wasn't as invested in the actual storyline as I was in The Perfect Marriage. I just felt, I don't know, there wasn't a ton of substance. It felt very like housewivey, like I told you guys. It's a bunch of rich women just kind of like arguing and like turning on one another. The ending does have a pretty big plot twist, but I kind of anticipated parts of what happened at the end. So that kind of did ruin it a little bit. Overall, I rated this book, I think a 3.75 because I did still really like it and I whipped through it really quickly and it was a nice change of pace. But in terms of was I obsessed with it? No. So 3.75, good thriller slash mystery, but not my favorite that I've ever read. And I've been breezing through my physical TBR, which I'm really happy about. I feel like this video is also motivating me. So next up, again, back to Sarah Caroli. If you guys don't follow her on YouTube, I don't know what you're doing. She's amazing, one of my favorite booktubers. And she also recently read The x Files, and she really enjoyed it. So I picked this one up at Barnes & Noble recently, and I wanted to get through it because I feel like it's a good summer read. It takes place in the summer on like a vineyard in California. So it was giving summer vibes and it's the end of summer. So I want to read it before the fall starts and it's called The X-Files. I don't know if I said that already. And I feel like the title kind of gives away part of the plot, which is that the main characters are exes and it's surrounding their best friend's wedding. And they kind of have to pretend like they're still in, on really good terms, even though there's a lot of tension and they're not necessarily on the best terms. And it could potentially, I could see it becoming like a childhood friends to lovers trope, or I guess childhood lovers 
second chance romance but we'll see time will tell it is a really easy read so far i'm liking it a lot jessica joyce this is my first book that i've ever read by her and i, I believe she's only published two you with the view is another one of her very popular books on book talk and i've heard awesome things about that one so this one is a newer release and I haven't heard too, too much about it, but I was excited to pick it up. So far, so good. It's a pretty standard romance, if you ask me. There is a little bit of smut, but nothing crazy. And I'm just excited to see where it goes. So I'll keep you guys posted, but this is book number three of this video. I feel like we're whipping through books pretty quickly. So I'll catch up with you guys probably when I finish this one. <music> chapter very wholesome we're done all right we are officially done the x vows by jessica joyce i literally just finished it and i figured i'd give you guys my honest thoughts i liked this book i thought it was very cute it is a second chains romance and it did have some mild elements of smut to it i really liked the background it was set in like a vineyard at their best friend's wedding and they were kind of having to team up together to fix a bunch of mistakes that happened and it just kind of brought them back to why their love like began in the first place so it was very very wholesome i will say i got a little bit bored at specific parts of the book so i think that it could have been slightly shorter maybe but overall it did kind of feel like a rom-com in the sense that like i said there was a lot of things going wrong and it was like i could just picture it like a movie in my head almost kind of hallmarky so if you like that vibe i think you would like this book the ending and the way that it wrapped up was very sweet very adorable and very picturesque very movie worthy in my opinion very cinematic so i definitely think this would be a good like netflix movie maybe ultimately was it my favorite book ever no i did like her writing style i will say it was cute it was easy to get through but it wasn't my favorite book that i've ever read so i think i'm going to settle on a 3.75 for this book it was a good romance good storyline cute setting just didn't hit super hard for me but i did really enjoy it next up we are going to do a very different genre than i typically read this is a dark romance book it is the first book in the legacy of god series it's called god of malice by rena kent i've heard a lot of really positive reviews on this series also some negative reviews i know that just a lot of people find it very dark so i'm not sure how i'm gonna feel about it considering the only other like super dark romance that i read was haunting adeline and i didn't love it so we're taking this one for a spin there's a lot of question marks i don't know what the plot is about i have literally no idea what i'm getting myself into other than it is a very dark Fan fantasy a very dark romance i don't know it says i caught the attention of a monster i didn't ask for it that's all i have to say we're gonna start reading god and malice pray for me and we'll see what my thoughts are in a little bit okay quick little update i started this yesterday and we are 70 pages in i'm gonna just be so for real I like it but it's very graphic within the first chapter if you're on the fence about reading this my advice would be download it on like a sample on kindle and just read the first chapter because the first chapter they go right in to the dark dark romance and um yeah just read the trigger warnings the plot is interesting it's i think it's going to be like a mafia dark romance which is always an interesting time there are like a decent amount of characters right now so i'm just kind of trying to get my head around how everyone is connected and related and you know personalities and such but so far so good but definitely just read the first chapter if you want to know what the vibes of this book are i am here to give you guys my final thoughts on god of malice by rena kent when i tell you i ate this book up i think at the beginning i was a little bit hesitant as to how I was going to feel about it, just because there is a lot of forced things going on. If you're catching my drift, sometimes non-consensual, so just go into this book knowing that. But I will say, even with all that that was going on, I really enjoyed this book. I haven't read, I don't know if I've ever read a mafia romance, if I'm being honest, and I ate this up. I think I read a mafia romance in like high school maybe but it's been so long and it definitely was not as explicit as this one but regardless ate this up loved the mafia 
plot line i feel like sometimes and i i might have said this before in my last clip so sorry if i'm repeating myself but i feel like sometimes the smut in these types of books can take over the plot and i didn't feel like that was the case with this book there was definitely smutty scenes throughout the book but i didn't feel like it was the only thing happening so i really appreciated that i wish that we had a little bit more of the mystery slash mafia plot line from like the beginning i feel like we really got a lot of it towards the last maybe quarter of the book which is great i really ate that up but I wish that it was a little bit more throughout the whole book, which is why I did not give this book a five star, but I did give it a four star. It was a really strong read. I liked her writing style. It took me a little bit to get to understand in my brain all of the characters because there are quite a few, but I'm excited to continue this series. I'm not going to continue it immediately, but it is something that I have on my radar for fall just because I feel like Mafia Dark Romance just gives cozy fall vibe so i will be reading the rest of this series at some point so comment down below if you guys would want to see a legacy of god like reading video of some sort or a dark romance reading video but anyways that's going to be the last book we read in today's video so thank you guys for coming along and getting through some of my physical tbr with me i will say we're making a good dent and i feel like the rest of the books that i have on my physical tbr or a lot of them are very fall inspired or fall vibe books so we will definitely be reading those and getting through a lot of them in the next couple of months so stay tuned if you want some more videos that are hint hint fall reading videos because that is coming your way very soon thank you guys so much for sticking through this video if you liked it don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up it does really help out the channel subscribe down below if you haven't already comment which book you want me to read next and i will see you all in the next video bye guys